But the title of this message today is Your Damascus Road Experience. Put your neighbor and say, this is my day. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our program. Now, today's message was actually filmed in Asheville, North Carolina, at the Church of Asheville. We had a mighty move of God. Revival fire was burning. You'll feel the presence of the Lord as you watch. Be blessed. <laughs> Amen. You know, I believe we are living in some uncertain times, and I believe that there is a shaking in the world. Yes. There's a shaking that's going on and people don't know what's taking place, but the church knows Jesus is coming soon. Yes. But I believe the darker the day, the brighter his church is going to shine for people yes. because this world is looking for hope and the only hope that they have is Jesus Christ. Yes. And I believe that as the, the church shines and, and the, the and glory of the Lord is going to be intensified and the presence of the Lord is going to be intensified in churches like this that are seeking the presence of the Lord. Amen. You're not seeking entertainment. There's a lot of people trying to entertain. We need to entertain the Holy Spirit. Because when you entertain the Holy Spirit, that's when miracle signs and wonders take place. And we're going to see more and more of those. I know in our services, I was sharing with uh, the pastor last night of how last year I went through some physical sickness in my body. I'd never been so sick in my life. And the doctors couldn't even find out what was wrong with me. And poor Doug, he prayed for me. He anointed me with oil till I was a grease ball. You know, he said, Lord, she's not getting any better. But I want you to know that the Lord healed me. My blood was so low that I needed almost a transfusion. I have never been so weak and tired and depressed. I've never faced depression in my life. But the Lord healed me. And the Lord said, from what you've gone through, your anointing to heal is going to be greater. And I can tell you from that time of what I went through, Every time we go, see, go places, we see healings and miracles. And that's not me. That's Jesus Christ for him to get the praise and the glory. Because it's his presence that brings the glory. And when I was praying this morning, it was like I saw this church. And the, it was like, the sun, it was just a glow. And that scripture, Isaiah 61, arise and shine my light has come. The glory of the Lord is shining upon you. And I believe this is going to be the lighthouse for Asheville. And you're going to see more and more people that are going to be drawn because it's the glory, it's the presence. They're going to say, I'm coming to that place. I need a healing. I need a miracle. I need a God experience in my life. I'm tired of religion. I want to see a real God with real power. And I know I can find it at this church. So, I'm just decreeing and declaring that it's coming, that it's here. Revival is here. We've been praying for revival. It's here. Why? It's in us. We're the hands and the feet of Jesus, but we got to stay plugged into the power source and have our Damascus Road experience and put Jesus number one and be filled with his power. Amen? So whatever you need from the Lord, first of all, you got to get real. There's too many people that act like I don't have any issues. I'm naming it and claiming it and everything is fine. But you're going through torment right now. But when you open up to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm going through something right now. I want you to increase your faith and let the Holy Spirit speak to you that this is my day for my miracle and my breakthrough. This day. The Lord told me this morning, this is a kingdom assignment day. Kingdom Assignment Day. It's no accident that we're here. So or no accident that you were watching by television. The Lord's going to speak to you today also. 
All right, let's get started in the word. Let's go to Acts 9, 3 through 6. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, I say suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, who are you, Lord? Then the Lord said, I'm Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the goads. So he trembling and astonished, astonished said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Then the Lord said to him, arise and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Let's pray over this word. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We feel your presence. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we decree and declare your glory in this house that the anointing of the Holy Ghost destroys every yoke and every bondage and that people are saved, healed, and set free and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, in the book of Acts, it was actually the best of times, but it was also the worst of times. Have you ever been to that point in your life that it's a good time, but then all of a sudden something bad comes our way? Well, the, it was the best of times because the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the day of Pentecost. People were being healed. People were being set free. People were being delivered. And it was just a wonderful time. I mean, Jesus, the word was being spread. But it was also the worst of times because Christians were being martyred. They were having to run for their lives. See, what had happened... The Lord had told them, you're supposed to go into Judea and Samaria. But after two years, they were still in Jerusalem. It was almost like they were still in their comfort zone when the Lord said, I've told you to go forth. So the Lord allowed the heat to be turned up to scatter them so the gospel could be taken forth in the world. So, so many times in our lives, y'all like your comfort zone? Don't we all? I tell you, the older I get, we like our comfort zone, don't we? (laughs) But when the Lord is calling you to do something, that comfort zone can become very uncomfortable. (laughs) I think we all can. So, we can either beat the heat or we can feel the heat because God's will will be done in our lives because everybody in this room, you have your own Samaria, you have your own Judea, you have your own people that need Jesus right now. And the Bible tells us to go ye, but we're like, not me. That's what Shekinah's for. Let them, let the evangelists do all the work. But we are living in a time now. You may not have a pulpit ministry, but you got somebody that needs Jesus. It may be your family. It may be people on the job. It may be people where you work in your neighborhood, but those people need Jesus. And some of you are just saying, I just can't be used by God. I'm not qualified. If we were qualified, God couldn't use any of us. He's not looking for superstars. He's looking for servants that say, I don't know a lot about what I'm talking about, but I can tell you my testimony. Let me tell you what Jesus did in my life. You don't have to have a a pulpit ministry to tell the world what Jesus has done in your life. Your testimony can change lives. Your testimony will do more than the best preachers in the world because people are looking for real. They want to see what God did in your life. And if God did it for you, He'll do it for me too. Amen? But if you never come out of your comfort zone, it'll never take place. You know, even a mother eagle, when she's ready for those little eaglets to fly, she puts wires and sticks and all these different things to make it uncomfortable so they'll fly. 
God will keep speaking to you. What we've got to understand, we see, we've, a lot of us were always brought up, okay, we just go to church, we get filled up. Well, what do you do when you get filled up? You go give it to others. You got to pour out so you can be filled up again. Because revival is in you. We're spending our time praying for revival. Lord, send us revival. And revival is here. We're the fire starters. <laughs> Y'all, are, do you know what Jesus Christ did with just a few group of people that was on fire for him? He set this world ablaze with a bunch of misfits that we would have fired in the first week. I mean, cussing Peter and murderers and doubting Thomases and but he poured his life into them and he loosed them and set them free and where is Christianity today because of those people that were willing to get out of their comfort zone to say Lord send me send me so we need to all be filled with the Holy Spirit because of being baptized in the Holy Spirit gives you the power to evangelize. Amen. You can't do it on your own. Right. See, so many people will say, well, I can't do that. Well, honey, when you get full of Holy Ghost and fire, you get the boldness that you never thought you had to go out there and tell this lost world about Jesus. Yes. Do you know that more new Christians bring people to Jesus than anybody else? They don't know anything about the Word of God. In fact, they may think Job is a job. (laughs) But they bring people to Jesus because they're excited. This world follows a fire truck. They don't follow an ice truck. (laughs) Now, we do that in Mississippi. Y'all may not do this in the mountains. But honey, when there's a fire, people are looking. (laughs) So we got to be filled with the presence of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord, and be obedient to what he's calling us to do. And get out of those comfort zones. I like what I read one time. He allowed that we, had, we were ignorant before he called us. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> well, during this time, there was a, na- a man named Saul. And Saul was persecuting Christians. He was traveling as far as 150 miles to Damascus to bring those Christians back to be martyred. He was the enemy that was going to destroy the Christians, but God stopped him. He had a Damascus Road experience. He was blinded. He met the living God on the way to get the Christians. He was blinded for three days and led into the city, blind and without food or drink. The enemy was coming to your house to destroy you. That's what the enemy wants to do to all of us. Kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can't take you out, he'll try to wear you out. And some of you have been going through one battle after another. If it's not in your finances, it's with your family, it's with your health. But I can tell you, the enemy was coming after you, but God stopped him. The Lord stopped him. Has God been good to you? I tell you, the only way that the Lord has, has been there for us and stopped the enemy is that we're all alive today. Because it's a miracle we make it past through our our high school years, our teenage years. (laughs) Thank God for praying parents and grandparents. But remember the time that you didn't have food for your table. But God stopped him. But God provided. Think about the time you were depressed out of your mind and you just give up. And some of you have been down too long. You've been depressed too long. You've been discouraged too long. It's time for you to pick yourself up, take back what the enemy has stolen from you, and say, no more, devil. No more. I'm ready for a turnaround. I'm tired of your attacks. See, some of you may be going through the valley right now, but don't you build a condo there or a cabin since we're in the mountains. 
We're going to the mountaintop. We're on top of Asheville here today. Amen. For the glory in this in the house today. So the Lord is still for you. He's for you. So he was blinded for three days and there was a believer named Ananias that the Lord spoke to and said, okay, there's this man, Paul, Saul. He's blinded, but you need to go lay hands on him so he can see. Don't you know that was out of his comfort zone? So he started telling the Lord what the Lord already knew. What you got to understand, Lord, this man is killing Christians. Now, I might be okay when he's blind, but what's he going to do when he opens his eyes up? (laughs) But he had a decision to make. Where would Christianity be if he hadn't gone that day? You know what happened? God would have sent somebody else. God would have sent somebody else. So he went on. I love the way he addresses him. Brother Saul. (laughs) He was praying he was a brother Saul, wasn't he? So he laid his hands on him. The scales fell off. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was baptized. He started preaching the gospel. He had a Damascus Road experience that changed his life. He went from persecuting Christians to persecuting Satan. Suddenly, just like that. Thank you, Jesus. Just like that. People are waiting on you to do what God's called you to do. Somebody somewhere, and the longer you delay, and the longer you make excuses, you're harming that person. But see, so many times we're, we're kind of like Ananias because we're telling the Lord what he already knows. Lord, don't you know this is not the best time to try to get a job with this economy? Lord, don't you know what the doctors have told me? Lord, don't you know I'm not qualified to lead anybody to Jesus? The Lord spoke to me a long time ago because I think a lot of times we do not want to uh, pray. A lot of people today don't pray for the sick anymore. They don't anoint with oil. They don't pray for the sick. And I believe in that totally. But we don't know. And and the Lord spoke to me one time and he said, what you got to understand is you're not the healer, I am. So somebody is waiting on you to be obedient. And how many times have we just sit there and we will, we know the Lord is speaking to our heart, but we, we make excuses. Tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm gonna talk to them tomorrow. I'm gonna pray with them tomorrow. I'm gonna encourage, hey, if you can do anything, encourage somebody. But this world is hurting right now. And sometimes just a phone call or a hug. Sometimes they don't need a sermon. They just need a hug. To say, look, I'm there for you. I'm praying for you. I'm being there for you. Amen. This is your day for your Damascus Road experience. A life-changing Experience. Have you ever had one before? I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about something that just, it was a good thing because it just really, it was just changed our life. Uh, several years ago, oh, a long time ago, because that was before I even got in ministry, as Doug and I were uh, sharing last night, we, we, neither one of them, us were really brought up in church. Our parents didn't go to church. And here we are, don't know what we're doing, but God's using us. <laughs> He takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, is all I know. A heart for him. But uh, I was working full time as a registered dietitian, and I was spiritually dry. Have you ever just been to that point in your life? It's just, you just 
have lost your passion for Jesus, the lost, you're just kind of existing. I feel like I'm speaking to people here today, you're existing instead of living, going through the motions. But someone had invited me to a church, a service, where they had a special lady that was gonna be speaking. And so I had told them I would go, and so I was, could have easily talked myself out of it. Brother, Lord, I'd just rather stay here at home and prop my feet up, I'm tired. But I went. And I thought it was a little strange, but you know, I'm a little strange too, but I was open. And this lady, she said, okay, if you want to have a closer relationship with the Lord, I've got this, it was like a prayer cloth thing. Just walk under it. And I thought, well, okay, I'll do it. When I got under that, it was like the Lord, I had a Damascus Road experience. I mean, it's like, my feet went out from under me. Some of you watching my television don't have a clue, but most of you here know what I'm talking about. But my feet just went out from under me. It was like I was just being electrified in the Holy Spirit. I was just there, I don't know how long. It was just like such a life-changing experience. And the Lord spoke to me at that time. He said, okay, go into the world and preach the gospel. And at that point, I had such a fire and a passion for Jesus. It was like such a life changing. I was so hungry for more of Jesus. But then I was, I I got to thinking, Lord, what if I had not been obedient? What if I'd have made an excuse? I don't know if I'd be preaching. You know, we don't know. We have opportunities that we all miss because we make excuses sometimes. But I thank the Lord for that Damascus Road experience. And I believe that's what the Lord has set this day up for you. Because some of you are existing. You're not living, you're going through the motions. And it was hard for you to even get here, but you made it. So yeah, you made it, you were obedient. And it's no accident that you're here. And the hunger that you have, the Lord can totally change your life here today. And you can say, man, I'm so glad I came. Lord, I'm hungry. Are y'all hungry for more of him? Hungry for more of his presence. Hungry for more of the move of the Lord in your life. But see, so many people have been blinded by the lies of the enemy. See, the mind is the battlefield. That's why we got to take every thought captive. We're living in a world now where there are so many people that are bound by anxiety and depression. And I'm talking to you in this room today because the Lord's already spoken that to me. You don't sleep well at night. Maybe somebody don't, they don't even know you're dealing with what you're dealing with right now. But that is a tormenting spirit that you need to be set free from. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But he is the healer. He is the miracle. Worker. But the enemy will, will tell you these lies. You're blinded by the, the lies that the enemy say, you've got a past. Do y'all have a past? Don't we all? But that's what the blood of Jesus is all about. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Are the lies of the enemy are, I'm, never, I'm always going to be worried and depressed. That's just who I am. I'm always going to have these addictions. But I can tell you, this day, those blinds, those uh, scales are coming off of your eyes. Because you know what the enemy hates? Confident Christians. Christians who know who they are in Jesus. That they're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Royal priesthood, chosen generation. As long as you're walking around and defeated, Hey, know who you are in Jesus and take authority over the enemy in your life and those scales are gonna come off. You were blind, but now you see that you belong to Jesus, that he has a a great future for your life. A true Damascus Road experience. A life changing. So whatever you need from the Lord, This is your day. Because I can tell you, this church prays. I love to see people praying before a church service. Some places we go to is entertainment. It's not about entertainment. Entertaining his presence. 
Because that's what the world's looking for. That's the only thing that's going to change your life. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost that destroys yokes and bondages. And his presence is here for whatever you need. I pray this message blessed you and your faith. You are encouraged today and you feel empowered and you feel refreshed by the Holy Spirit. If you're watching this program and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, maybe you know religion, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus. You joined the church, you shook the preacher's hand, but you really don't know Jesus, or maybe you're not living for him, and the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, I ask you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross just for me, and you rose again on the third day. Come into my heart and come into my life, and from this day forth, I'm going to live for you. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. Find you a good Bible-believing church and grow to be more like Jesus. Well, maybe you're watching and you are physically ill in your body. Maybe you're in the hospital. Maybe you're in the nursing home and you need healing. Or maybe you're just in your home and you you have some health issues. We still serve a supernatural miracle working God. So if you need special prayer, we do have a 1-800 number, a prayer line. Call that number. Be sure to leave a message and we'll call you back and we'll have faith to agree with you in prayer. Now, I can't go off the air without thanking our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we pray for you every day. And we could really use your help. Television's expensive. This world needs Jesus. We are spreading Jesus to a hurting world, but it costs a lot of money. Any donation would be appreciated. So if the Holy Spirit's speaking to you, please give us a donation. We could really use that right now. Now, next week, we're going to have a brand new show, a brand new message. But until then, this is Sandra Hancock with Voice of Hope. And remember, your hope is in Jesus. My name is Sandra Hancock, and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. Many of you that are watching this broadcast, you feel like you're at the end of your rope. You've got some impossible situations, but I got some good news. You have hope in Jesus because we still serve a supernatural miracle working God of now. I also would like to invite you to come out and join us in one of our powerful conferences in a city near you. It would make our day to have you as our guest. If you think our broadcast is powerful, wait and come and experience the presence of the Lord. You'll love it. Also, I want to thank our partners. We sincerely love and appreciate you, and we thank you for helping us spread Jesus to a hurting world. God bless you all.